This will be the most comprehensive video on sweeteners you have ever seen with the news of urethritol linked to strokes and clots. What are the warnings we need to be aware of? What is the truth when it comes to sweeteners? Right now, I'm going to break down 25 different sweeteners so you know exactly what are they for? Do they impact you on your journey to losing weight and dropping pounds? Are they creating inflammation and toxicity in your body? Are there calories involved? Is there benefits from some of these? And we're the ones we need to stay completely away of away from and all the gray area in between. It's Dr. Living Good. Let's go. The most comprehensive overview of sweeteners you have ever seen and come across. I just spent exhaustive amounts of research to pull this off. Let's dive in. Check this out. I put together this chart for you to make this really simple to follow along. We're going to break our way through these and I'm going to give you the facts and I'm going to try to as unbiased as possible show you what you should be looking out for, what are possible ones you could be using in your cupboard, what do Nurse Living Good and I have in our cupboard because I think that matters that we're teaching things that we're actually using ourselves? And should you be moving away from urethritol? We're gonna answer that question. I'm gonna show you that study. Probably get a little bit compassionate. That's compassionate with a little bit pissed off of the approach of what's going on with urethritol now being thrown under the bus. I'm not defending it at all. I'm gonna give you the truth of the facts of what the dangers are of it. But there's just so much more we could be focusing on. But let's straighten it out so you can lose the weight, feel good about it, right? Keep it down and still enjoy some things as a human being. So let's check this out. All right, sugars, out of the gates. Here's five of them. Them, right? Sugar of all types, powdered sugar, cane, also known as turbinado, just a fancy name they put on there. Brown sugar, high fructose corn syrup, pretty much all the regular straight up sugars that you're going to run into. Now, from that perspective, anything ending in O-S-E is going to be a sugar. Fructose, lactose, glucose, sucrose, all the oses. I teach this in my books. You can get copies of those in the description to help you understand. There are 60 plus different names for sugar, but the oses make up most of them. You need this as a tool in your body. It's fuel. You have to run off glucose. Your brain uses a ton of glucose. That's how you can work all day long and then just be exhausted. Like, I didn't even do anything. I was sitting at a desk. And your brain being exhausted because you're using so much glucose in your brain. So it is a fuel. Got to be able to convert to it. We need that. Uh, it's a main nutrient, carbohydrate broken into glucose. It's a food group or, uh, excuse me, a macro for a reason, right? There's three of them. We got fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, glucose being that. But all these oses, we get exposed to way too much. And what it's creating is metabolic conditions and disease blood pressure problems if you're suffering from these, cholesterol issues and triglyceride issues, diabetes, excess weight gain and obesity is exploding along with significant amount of fatty liver that are going on. And so a lot of it has to do with what's going on right there with OS. So I looked at a few criteria for you to help you to make decisions on what's best for you and your approach moving forward. The first one is weight loss. And it does it, you know, aid in weight loss, could it be used in weight loss, meaning is it gonna spike insulin levels, spike sugar levels and cause you to store more sugar into the form of energy in fat, or is it going to allow you to burn it up quickly or maybe not spike your storage, turn into fat at all? So which ones are best for weight loss, okay? And then we're looking at, so number two is, is it gonna spike your blood sugar levels more or less than regular sugar would, okay? We're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at, does it contain calories? There's some of you that count those or pay attention to those, and so I wanted to put that info in there for you. Is it naturally occurring? Like, could you go into nature and find this in a food? Could you find, you know, the, the, the portions and the ingredients of it to combine, it, does it occur in nature? I think that matters. Because the closer we are to food by God, the better off we are real foods, natural foods versus really heavily processed ones. So we're going to kind of toe that line with each, with each of these. Are there problems known with it? Do we know by consuming too much of this, it's going to create these issues based on the research and on the studies that have gone through? And then is there any kind of benefit to it, even if there is some downsides? So that's what is broken down right here. So we look at sugar right out of the gate, glucose, sucrose, Sucrose, fructose, maltose, galactose, dextrose, all of the oses. They are going to not be the best choice for weight loss because you're putting in way more energy, eating way more energy than we're burning off, right? Now, obviously, sugar is the standard here that we're going to compare column to. Uh, it does have calories. So it is going to add a caloric intake into the system. It is naturally occurring, right? It's a food group, it's a fuel. And so there is a benefit in that regard of we need fuel, we need uh, to be able to uh, have an output, especially if you're an athlete or someone that's 
that's on the go a lot, we do need fuel, right? Is it the best type of fuel? We have to be very selective because it can lead to metabolic disease. And we're in the middle of a, an epidemic of obesity and overweightness where we're consuming way too much sugar in the form of these oses. It's hitting our liver. Our liver then says, well, we have way too much energy going on here. It then turns those into triglycerides. So a telltale sign that you are having problems with this is your triglycerides are very high or you're starting to get just excess weight storage. It's gonna go take those and that extra sugar and store it as fat. So this is not excess fat, it's excess oses, excess sugar a lot of time. So I don't have to convince you too much of the concerns with it. That's why we've started to go different routes. So I wanted to take a look at some of its friends, powdered sugar, okay? What's the deal with that? Powdered sugar is actually, did you know this? Powdered sugar is actually sugar in its finest form combined with cornstarch. Corn's gonna show up a lot during this. And the problem with it is it's oftentimes genetically modified. It really does no nutritional value to your body. It's hard on your brain health and it spikes insulin levels, spikes sugars levels very quickly. So when we look at powdered sugar, it has cornstarch added. That's why it has that fine powdery form to it. This is not gonna be friendly if you're trying to lose weight. It's going to spike your blood sugar levels more than regular sugar would. So it's gonna have a significant blood sugar spike. Comes with calories. That is not naturally occurring. Now it does technically contain two sort of natural ingredients, but it's not like you're finding powdered sugar in nature, if that makes sense for you, okay? Corn starch, all right, it's made from corn. Get that. Sugar, all right, it's coming from sugar cane. We combine the two of those together. So it's kind of that gray area there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, Dr. Living is gonna give that a no, that's not naturally occurring. Uh, out there, that is something man has put together to make. Next, it's going to be directly linked to metabolic disease, and there's really no benefits to powdered sugar outside of your taste buds. But we're not talking about those today, okay? So we're trying to find alternatives to sugar so you can still some, enjoy some sweetness, which a lot of us like, right? Many of us addicted to, but not have such an impact on the body. That's the whole point of the video. So cane or turbinado is next, all right? Now, turbinado I get asked a lot about. It's just another name for cane sugar. And really the only difference between cane sugar and regular sugar is that it's not taken a couple more steps. So cane sugar is gonna be left in its more discolored state. So you have sugar in the raw, for example. It's gonna be brown when it's done. Well, aesthetically, they want sugar to be just pure white. So they take it a couple more steps. They wash it and discolor it. And that's how you get regular sugar that you'll see. Cane sugar or turbinado is just left brown. So it's very similar to it. So it's going to have, when you look at the stats on it, it's going to not be good for weight loss. It does gonna, It's just going to spike your blood sugar a little bit more even than sugar itself. It's going to have calories associated. It is naturally occurring. It comes straight from the beet of uh, a sugar plant or the actual you know sugar cane itself. And so, you know, that's one thing it's got going for you. It does come from nature, we just overdo it. And that creates metabolic disease. It is, however, a fuel, right? Next up, we have brown sugar. Brown sugar does not naturally occur uh, in nature. I gave this one a yellow for that, right? Because technically what brown sugar is, and some of you might not know these things, uh, I learned a lot through all of my research to really dive in deep with these 25. It's sugar, cane sugar, combined with molasses. Now molasses is gonna be naturally occurring when they process the sugar cane itself or the sugar beet itself, and they're gonna extract out the molasses, but what they do then is they take it and then they add it back in with sugar to give it that brown discoloration. So it is not a naturally occurring thing. However, it's made out of two new naturally occurring things. So that's kind of our toe in the, toe in the line there, okay? Now, uh, I don't love it though for its impact on, you know, weight loss not gonna be good. It's about the same impact on your blood sugar levels as sugar would be. It does have calories. Again, this is a concocted man-made thing and it's gonna lead to the metabolic disease. There's really no benefits to it. So this is why these things we're trying to get more of these out of our diet. Something you can never use them. We can just all admit we have grossly overused them. And then the mother of them all that we are trying to avoid desperately that is in all of our sodas and so many different packaged goods, high fructose corn syrup. This one got a dark red for me across the board. And so weight loss, absolutely. It is almost, it's absorbed almost twice as fast into your blood than sugar itself. Uh, it's high in calories, definitely not naturally occurring, highly processed. The end result ends up with heavy metals in it. Uh, a very concentrated form of super toxic sugar. In fact, um, there's some that say that you can actually drink this and you're okay, but if you were to inject it directly into the blood, it would be a big problem because it's just so potent. But your body now has to sort of, you know, when you eat it, deal with the side effects of this just mega sugar. And it's very hard on the liver. In fact, this is the main culprit for the explosion of fatty liver. So if you are concerned with fatty liver, you should be. Uh, there's, you know, 50% of Americans almost now that are dealing with it, 90 plus million people. We need to be concerned with that. And there's a very real danger of that getting bogged down. Lots of excess belly fat and storage of fat on your body. High fructose corn syrup is really 
a big enemy that we have. So there are your regular sugars right out of the gates, okay? Nothing too shocking or surprising. Maybe you didn't know a little bit about how some of those were made, but those are the ones we're going after. So now there's been this big movement over the last 20, 30 years of creating, maybe a little bit longer, creating alternatives to these. You're not actually eating real sh you know, sugar itself. You're eating this alternative that has a sweetener, but some of that stuff can get really toxic as well. So let's break down the remaining 20. Here we go. So let's first go into natural sugars, okay? Natural sugars. As we work through here, I'm gonna work through sugars, natural sh sugars, natural sugars, natural sweeteners, and then we're gonna go into artificial sweeteners. All right, that's gonna be the, the, the kind of the breakdown of it. And of course, I'm gonna show you the new research on your erythritol, link the clots, that's coming up in a few moments, just really exposing the truth of all these sweeteners. Now, first one out of the gates, maple syrup, okay? Excellent, God made it. Uh, I made it as a kid. We had a tree in our front yard, right? And we had to drill into it with my dad as a maple tree, and we hung a bucket from it, and then it drained out of there, and you had to take it and distill it down, and you got this little jar. So they got a whole bucket full, and there's this little bit, right? Now, that's a naturally occurring syrup, naturally occurring substance. It takes a little bit of processing, you know, boiling down, but not a lot of chemicals or anything like that used most of the time. So maple syrup, decent option. Now, the problem with these natural sugars is they're still sugar. It's natural sugar, but you're still getting a sugar hit, which means you're still taking in calories, you're still spiking, you know, blood sugar levels, insulin levels. It's not as friendly on weight loss, okay? I love the health makeup of these foods. And so really this whole page right here, the big concept is that if you are attempting to lose weight and control your cholesterol and control your triglycerides and control your blood pressure, control your blood sugar, we probably wanna avoid these for right now. But the goal is to land back on this page, this chart, because these are naturally occurring ones, the, the food by gods. Your body knows what to do with them. It knows how to communicate better with the food because it's real, right? So I love that about these. It's just they're having an insulin spike. So that's one of the main knocks on it. So that's why weight loss, not ideal. Cut it out for a period of time till you hit your goals or you hit your, you know, getting off your medications. Then you add these things back in. If you choose to use it before that point, I totally understand. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you, if you want the fastest track to controlling type 2 diabetes or to losing weight, then this one should go for a period of time because you got to allow your body to heal. What's happened is we have complete insulin resistance because we've been hit with so much sugar in our diet. We are constantly calling on insulin. Hey, I got another delivery of sugar. Insulin's at the door. And then your body's got to say, well, what am I going to do with this package? Okay, I got a little bit of room. I'll put it in. And then all of a sudden, insulin's here again. It's like the Amazon delivery guy. And here's another package. And then and here's the insulin guy again. And he's, he's like, all of a sudden you're like, where am I? I'm, I'm not a warehouse. How do I store all these packages of sugar? Well, we're overeating it so much with so many different meals. We really need to cut it out. Stop the delivery guy from having to do his job. Give him a break because he's getting wore out seven days a week, 365 days a year. He's delivering packages to your cells with sugar. So we give that insulin a break because pretty soon the Amazon guy says, I'm on strike. I'm resistant to delivering more packages because I'm just burnt out. So we got to allow them to recover, allow the delivery delivery guy to recover. Are you with me on this one? Is this good? To deliver those packages. That's the reason why with weight and metabolic conditions, why I recommend that first you cut these things out. And then your goal is to heal the receptors, heal the package delivery, and then you can come back to these and choose them. So there's less of a blood sugar spike compared to sugar, but there is still one. Okay. That's significant enough. That's close to sugar. It does contain calories, of course, right? But it is naturally occurring. So your body's going to be able to adapt with it. So problems with it is the sugar spike, like we talked about. Benefits of it, maybe Maple syrup has a lot of minerals in there. Calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, copper, manganese. It has more nutrients from a mineral perspective than honey does. So that's why I put that one closer to the top. These aren't in like perfect order, but maple syrup is right up there. It's a great option. Nurse Living Good uses it in a lot of recipes to make baked goods, right? And if I'm gonna be eating baked goods, I'm probably gonna be closer to already hitting my goals. Most of us know I'm like, I'm gonna stay away from all types of baked goods until I hit my goals and then I'm good. But that's what she uses a lot of times to make those. Now, keep going. Honey next. Uh, so what type of maple syrup? Let me touch on that. Before we move on to honey, let's touch on what type of maple syrup should you be getting? A lot of controversy there. They changed the grading a few years ago. Uh, it used to be A and B. And they did a study and they found that B was getting discriminated against because <laughs> everyone thought B was inferior when that's not the case. And so they just changed. Everything is now A, but there's darknesses to it. So, you know, an amber or a dark brown. The darker that you get your maple syrup, the more nutrients involved, the more minerals you're going to to get. So darker is better. Makes it very easy to understand that. Get an amber or get a dark brown. Okay, you're gonna have a little bit less sweetness, which is nice. More minerals. Next up, honey. Fantastic. Made in nature, obviously, right? From the nectar of flowers by our friendly 
freebies. And this thing has a lot of benefits, but downside when you are metabolically trying to fix the cholesterol, the blood pressure, the blood sugar, it is going to give you excess sugars. And so cutting those out, allowing insulin receptors to heal. That's why this one has to go during a weight loss period of time, but it doesn't spike blood sugar as much as regular sugar. It does have calories. It is naturally occurring, of course. Um, you know, on the downsides of it, unlike maple syrup a little bit, is there some allergens to it for some people? It is going to have that sugar spike, but it's really good. It shows studies for cholesterol actually helps to lower it a little bit. LDLs really good for wounds and potentially for the seasonal allergies because the pollen and the nectar that comes from those flowers are obviously seasonal. I'm looking out the window here. And so there's going to be like the antidote to seasonal allergies in some of that. You can put it in your tea. That's why I recommend raw local honey because it's going to be built for your area. You're going to get more benefit in the area that you're living in versus bees that are from the other side of the country. Okay. So pick raw local if you can help it. Uh, don't get the, you know, just the little bear, you know, that I see. That's what I used to have as a kid, right? It's highly processed and it loses a lot of its good nutrition. Uh, wound healing, right? Manuka honey is actually excellent for any kind of open wound or open sore that you're having and it's not quite healing up or maybe early on, you can kind of put that sappiness, especially Manuka, very high end. Uh, it's expensive, but very, very, very effective at healing wounds. And so there's definitely benefits there. Uh, and when it comes to the sugar amount though, that's why it's just suspect for a while, but eventually you can add that back in once goals are hit. Okay, next up, dates. I get asked about dates a lot. Obviously I love this because it's a food by God and it's naturally occurring. This fruit, this fig uh, is going to have a lot of really good properties, a lot of good nutrition to it, a lot of antioxidants involved there. However, it has a pretty power packed insulin spike, pretty power packed amount of sugar inside of it. So when it's coming to like a weight loss side of things, this might not be the one to pick up because of the three out of the gates here, this one definitely has the highest spike of sugar. In fact, it spikes your blood sugar levels more than actual sugar itself. It's got calories. It is definitely naturally occurring food by God. I love that. And, but the problem with it, it's going to have that bigger sugar impact, which is going to work against weight loss goals, work against inflammation reduction goals. It is the highest in antioxidants though, very high in antioxidants, obviously being more of a fruit slash fig, that's going to give you a, uh, you know, a lot better pop when it comes to the nutrients. Next up molasses, molasses. And so you might think of that like, I, you know, when I, I, I didn't know a ton with it cause I don't like do a lot of baking, but really leaning into it, there's some really really cool nutritional benefits with molasses. The downside, just like honey and maple syrup, it's going to have that sugar impact. So again, this is something you fix your goals, fix your weight loss, and you can come back around to and use a naturally occurring one and avoid any kind of urethritol debate because this is just straight up molasses. Now it is made from the sugar cane itself. They take the sugar cane or the beet, uh, it's boiled down to a syrup. Now the kind you want to look for is black strap. Black strap molasses is more distilled down. It's triple processed. And because of that, it's going to give you a bigger impact. Check this out on the blood sugar level. So molasses is going to be lower than sugar, even though it comes from the sugar cane because of this triple process, if it's black strap. Okay. Now not ideal out of the gates for weight loss. Remember you got to hit the goals, come back to it. It does have calories involved, but it's definitely naturally occurring. All right. Problem with it being those sugars. However, this has antioxidants, very good source of antioxidants. It has nutrients in it to support bone growth. It is chucked full of several minerals, including iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, vitamin B6. Uh, it's very good for the blood, especially if you're suffering with anemia. This is a good one to add in if you are anemic and also trying to lose weight. Um, supporting the bone health, supporting hair health, and also can be a reliever for constipation. So molasses, a lot of benefits when it's that black strap one. However, if the goal is first, I got to get the weight off. I got to get the cholesterol down. You're seeing the theme here. Cut that out for now. The goal is to try to get back to it if we can get insulin fixed and the body fixed. Last one, I combined together coconut and palm. I'm more partial to uh, coconut, a little more natural from a the processing standpoint, uh, a little lighter on the environment or palm, depending on how it's processed, you know, from a rainforest or from areas of the world where they're really just clear cutting and getting it like it's, it's got some, you know, controversy with that a little bit. Um, palm is a little bit better on the glycemic insect index than coconut, but coconut comes with a couple other great benefits. Um, but this of all of them on the page, this one here scores the best when it comes to the weight loss, blood sugar spike perspective. It's about half as much as sugar, or even a little bit below that. It's going to be better than maple syrup, honey, and dates when it comes to the sugar spike. However, it is still going to provide sugar to the system. If you are trying to lose weight, I would proceed with caution with this one. However, it can be used, right? But if you are seeing that you're stalling out with weight loss, you're stalling out with your cholesterol changes, you're stalling out with your blood pressure changes, you're stalling
stalling out and beating your type 2 diabetes, then I would cut this one out. And so that's why I like to trim it out to start with. But coming back around, when you are able to add these back in, coconut sugar has got some good benefits, okay? It does have some calories. It is naturally occurring, but it's got healthy fats involved, obviously coming from coconut. We need healthy fats. You need healthy fats. Every cell in your body is surrounded by healthy fats, but it's a fat layer that allows nutrients in and keeps toxins out. Well, you're making 300 million new cells every minute. What are they being made of? Well, they're being made of whatever you ate recently. And if you've only eaten bad sources of fat, they're gonna be made out of compromised fats, which leaves you congested and potentially toxic. So as part of the detoxification diet that I teach, it's getting healthy fats in. That's why I like this one, because not only are you getting a little bit of that sweetness, but you're also getting fats and you're getting fiber with this one as well, which makes it unique. So all of these on here, I think are good food by God options that we're trying to get back to. But let's keep diving in to these natural sugars. Now this is where things start to heat up a little bit and we start getting into some of these alternatives that now lots of you want to know about. So page number three here are our sweeteners, okay? Natural sweeteners. That's what these are justified as because it's not straight up the, uh, you know, the sugar cane we picked and that's what we're eating. It's not straight up the uh, molasses that came from the sugar. It's not the straight up form of honey and you're just eating it, right? Now these start to dip into the sweetener side of things where they still come oftentimes from foods, but they are now categorized as sweeteners. That's the difference here, all right? So just a naming convention. But right out of the gates, the first one that I have on the list is tapioca cassava. Tapioca it comes from a cassava root. Cassava, I like because it's a tuber in the root category, konjac root, cassava. These are things I use quite often. They are very good prebiotics, meaning they can help stimulate good bacteria growth in the gut. And they have a very minimal spike on glucose levels in your blood and on insulin. So I reach for those a lot of times with um, like a kind of chip I might eat or a cracker I may eat or a tortilla shell or even a flour that we're using. We use a lot of cassava. Well, that's tapioca maltodextrin, okay? And this is an extract from that root. Now, maltodextrin itself, big warning on that. Okay. Tapioca or cassava maltodextrin studies, multiple of them, PubMed research shows very different story with that type. And so you can actually use it, be a human being and have some of these things like a cracker, like a chip, like a, and still get that consistency, that crunch that, because it holds foods together and it's a good probiotic. Now you are dealing with SIBO, uh, you know, intestinal overgrowth, having a lot of digestive distress, putting roots in, starches in, uh, aren't going to be as friendly. So it is not what we refer to as FODMAPs friendly. So if you were really starting to clear the gut out and there is an overgrowth in there, you don't want to put a bunch more prebiotics in. So that would be the exception for it. So on the chart here, very friendly for weight loss. Okay. It's going to have less of a blood sugar spike than uh, actual sugar, right? There are just a little bit of calories involved. I left that one yellow because it's like, it's just a touch, but it's not as much as say a serving of sugar, right? It's just a little bit of amount, but they are there. So uh, very minimal. Some people would say no, but there is a little bit there. So I wanted to make sure I have the full truth here for you, okay? It is naturally occurring. And the reason I also made that one yellow a little bit is because, you know, there is a process there. It's not like you're just taking a bite right out of the roots, right? You do have to get it down to that powdered form or even that liquid form and to be able to use it. So it's with a little bit of processing, it's not just like honey squeezed out of the, the container, you know, like even though honey has to go through a little bit of processing too. But I just want to give that disclaimer because my job is to show you like the whole process of it, but pretty darn friendly when it comes to that. Of course, avoid it if you have SIBO and it's not non-genetically modified when it's compared to its counterpart, regular maltodextrin, which we're going to cover next. Okay. It's a good prebiotic. It's going to help feed good bacteria inside of your gut. Most people need that outside of our FODMAPs folks, SIBO and significant digestive system disorders. All right. Next up, maltodextrin. Okay. Straight up maltodextrin, usually made from corn, right? Starts to get very processed, starts to have a lot, sometimes potatoes or wheat or rice. Okay. But a lot of times corn. So it's going to be genetically modified. It's going to come with glyphosate, which is going to be the herbicide they're using on wheats and rices and corns. It's going to have the pesticides that come with it. So there's a lot of chemical intake. Intake. There's genetically modified organism intake, and it's just not going to be friendly when it comes to the sugar levels. This spikes it really fast, 30, 40 points higher than sugar itself on your glycemic index of how fast it hits your bloodstream. Not good for weight loss then. Calories again, not very many there, just a touch. Okay. Uh, it's not naturally occurring in that regard of it takes a lot more processing for it to come from corn to get to that. So of course the shaving down a root versus taking wheat 
and turning it into this type of powder of maltodextrin. The corn is going to be a problem as far as your brain health and the spike on the insulin. It's going to be genetically modified and can create allergies where it comes from gluten or you know from the corn itself. Now it is a source of fuel. There are athletes and such that actually use this so they can get their blood sugars up faster for energy. So there are people in the world that use this at certain times. I just think the downfalls are the chemicals and the things that come with it. So I stay away from regular maltodextrin, but I am okay with tapioca slash cassava. Tapioca is cassava root. I'm looking for that root. Next up is agave. This really exploded maybe like 10 years ago and there's some issues with it and it's glaringly obvious when I show this to you. Agave, obviously a nectar, obviously a syrup. You know, even if it's organic, the problem with it is this. It's not friendly for weight loss. Um, it does contain calories and it doesn't spike insulin and blood sugar fast. However, it is naturally occurring where they get it, but it is made up 90% fructose. Why does that matter? Well, instead of glucose for the fuel that your body is trying to burn up, that's its main source of fuel for your brain and your tissues, this is now fructose. A little bit different, family member of glucose, but that's gotta be processed in the liver. Now, the issue with high fructose corn syrup is it hits the liver, overwhelms it, increases the amount of triglyceride production, increases fat production, and makes your liver fatty. Well, high fructose foods are gonna do the same thing. Gavi is one of them, 90% fructose. It's the highest except for high fructose corn syrup. So for that reason, I do not recommend it for any kind of weight loss or really any benefits, okay? If you've used it, just if you're in great health, right, and you're hitting your goals, you can eat fructose. Like fructose is found in fruits, right? But if we massively overdo fruits and we're already over obese, it's gonna create a blood sugar problem, okay? What I like more about the fruits is they come with a lot of fiber. And so if you eat an apple the way it's supposed to be eaten, not a juice concentrate, which is actually next, by the way, you're getting the fibers which counteract it. So you're getting half or even uh, more a reduction in the sugar intake to your bloodstream because the fibers counteracting it. God knew how to make the apple. But if you concentrate it and boil it down, right, and you just use the juice of it, totally different story because there's not fiber in there. So the same thing applies to agave. That's why it becomes a problem and it's very concentrated fructose, even higher than fruit. So let's go to fruit, speaking of which, with fruit juices, fruit concentrates, oftentimes end up in your gummies, in your um, you know flavorings, in multiple different foods. And the problem with it is, not friendly for weight loss because of the actual naturally occurring sugars in there. Again, we've overdone it. We need to cut it completely out so that the system can reset insulin wise. And what that means is that if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to move the metabolism needle, the blood pressure, the blood sugar needle, if you eat a lot of fruit that spikes insulin levels and spike blood sugar levels, it's gonna be hard to fix your insulin resistance. So berries, Granny Smith apples, grapefruits, very minimal impact on the sugar levels. So during our detox detoxification diets and plans that I teach, those are okay while you're achieving your weight loss goals. Once you hit your weight loss goals, have yourself some pineapple sometimes, have yourself some mango, have, there's excellent benefits, excellent nutrients with those things, but until we hit the goals, we don't add them back in. So it's kind of like in that category of honey for the actual fruit that comes with the fiber, very different than when we concentrate it down into a juice or a concentrate that's used in a food. Now, the sugar content's gonna be high, it is naturally occurring, there is vitamins and minerals associated with it, but when we are concentrating it down, we are getting the maximum amount of sugars. We're removing the fiber and damaging the nutrients. So for that reason, uh, I would proceed with caution there. The last one, brown rice syrup. This shows up in so many things, so many natural candies, uh, and it is not a good profile. Not friendly on weight loss. It spikes sugar levels higher than almost anything on our list. Peaks out at almost 100 for the glycemic index. Off the charts. A lot of calories in brown rice syrup. So we have very high sugar. There's no real benefit. A lot of times you're starting to deal with uh, chemicals, pesticides, or even being genetically modified. So brown rice syrup sounds nice because like rice, it's more healthy, but to turn rice into syrup and we put it in your body, it's really having a big impact on the waistline when it comes to that. So a couple okay ones on there, right? Some decent ones, cassava root, I really like, uh, and it, a better option with some of those. And then you know, like fruits themselves, of course, after you hit the goals, fruit juices straight up, like you juiced it, of course, after you hit your goals or if it's lower sugar, but the concentrates and the juices that end up in your products kind of got to be leery, especially if you're trying to hit a goal. So what do we do? What do we eat? Let's get into a shiny list here. Here's some of my favorites. Natural sweetener wise, um, these are ones extracted directly from foods with the least amount of processing, least amount of side effects to the system. All right, so let's really start to break those down. These natural sweeteners occurring in nature, any one of these 
you could eat and it could create some digestive disturbance, right? That's the, the kind of thing for all of them. Just like a lot of foods have some kind of negative if you eat too much of it. So do not overdo these. Stick to real foods. Try to break your sugar addiction. But if you need them, here's some of my favorites that I use, we use, and the research behind them is strong. Number one is monk fruit. Coming from an actual fruit itself, it's friendly on the weight loss side of things because it doesn't um, spike the blood sugar levels as much. Now, there's some research out there that shows that's zero. A zero glycemic index doesn't spike it at all. There's some other studies that show, yeah, it does still have an impact on the blood sugar levels, but better than straight up sugar. So kind of an in-betweener there a little bit. I like to use it because it comes from a fruit. Now with monk fruit, what I source is organic monk fruit. Like if you were to take my collagen or um, my electrolyte powder, it's going to come from organic source, which means nothing else is in it. And I know it's controlled as far as pesticides and herbicides. That's not as common in the grocery store. I mean, I can go to Whole Foods today and it's going to be mixed with erythritol. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a, in a second, why that's a problem and what's being done to erythritol and why it's now caught up in a lot of controversy. But monk fruit by itself does exist. If you need help finding that, I'm going to put a link in this description here for just products we love, not ones we own, not ones we make, just stuff that we're currently using in our kitchen. And this changes, right? What we used five years ago is different than today. And guess what? If you're watching this video five years after it was made, it changes again. But the link I'm going to give you, we can update. And as we learn more, we make changes to it, right? And we're realizing, you know what? Maybe erythritol isn't the best bet to have mixed in with the monk fruit. Is there another one we can use that doesn't have to have that? So we don't even have to worry about any kind of controversy if there is one as we learn more about it. Um, I think there's way worse things than urethritol. However, why is it always mixed in with monk fruit? Um, so to get it pure one, you can do a liquid extract that can easily be organic, or you can actually get powdered ones. Um, they're starting to become more prevalent. I think they're going to become more and more prevalent upon making this video uh, and getting this news out there. So monk fruit doesn't hit on the calorie side of things. It is naturally occurring. The problems with it, oftentimes there's erythritol added. So if we can avoid that, I think it's better. I think it's still a good choice. You're going the right direction. It's way better than an arsh sweetener um, on its impact, even if there is erythritol. So I don't think we're in a case where you just immediately need to throw that stuff out, but you're trying to upgrade, right? We're always trying to get a little bit better. We're always trying to progress. You're not killing yourself if there's erythritol in there. We just say, okay, maybe there's a better choice of one without that. Now, it's a good antioxidant. It's a good anti-inflammatory, and it also is antimicrobial. So monk fruit actually has in its own right a, a nutritional benefit, like kind of like a, like, like moringa or like an omega, or like it, it can be used as a supplement, but it's also a sweetener. Isn't that kind of cool? So that's why I, I like that one. And like I said, things keep, keep changing, but I just make sure and get it organic when I can help it. The next one, Stevia, also along the same concept. So uh, helping with weight loss, does not spike that insulin level of GI index. Some studies show it doesn't, it's a zero on the index. Other studies show it does still spike it some. Uh, there's no calories involved here. It is naturally occurring. It's a plant, right? but we run into the same problem. Oftentimes, these mass producers of it know that you're wanting to make better choices for yourself and go to something that's coming from a food that doesn't have that big sugar spike. And it's, But they mix other stuff in. Dextrose, corn maltodextrin. These things start showing up, maybe some urethritol. And so if you can get it, my advice is just stevia leaf, right? Whether it's liquid form or powder form, you're not gonna be able to get it quite as in bulk. But those would be the options if you do need it or if you're taking it with a supplement, then those are, the, are better options to go organic, just that ingredient. Ingredient, that means nothing else is going to be added into it typically. Uh, it does aid, there's some research for cholesterol and even for your teeth a little bit. So it's got some benefits of helping those, those out. Of course, if you overdo it, you could get some GI distress, right? Just like with monk fruit. If you're overdoing these things and you're completely relying on them and pounding them in, we've got to fix the well there. We've got to fix the root of the problem, not just you know, the fruit or the sink, if I were to use the well analogy and the, and the tree analogy. So we're still addicted to the sugar. We're just trying to use something else to cover that up. We really want to get down to the source of the sugar addiction. That's what we help a lot of people do. Next up, yakin fruit, right? Interesting. You might not heard this one. It's getting more and more popular. Uh, very good, again, with, with weight loss because it's not spiking that blood sugar level. It does have calories involved with it, right? Um, it's kind of like middle of the road with the calories. So you're going to get a few more calories with this than you would with many of the other options. Um, but it is naturally occurring, right? It's kind of like a, like a almost like a potato. Right? I believe out of South America is primarily a place it's grown. Uh, this is going to have that root effect, that tuber effect in on your gut as it's a, pro, a prebiotic, kind of like cassava and tapioca. It's going to be you know, a, a negative for people on FODMAPs. And so if you do, you're trying to overcome SIBO, you're trying to overcome maybe a leaky gut, this might not be the best unless you're, you're needing the extra prebiotics and probiotics and this is going to be excellent. But it's not a lot of you listening, but it is some of you. I always want to just give you kind of the full warnings, the full truth of it. But another one that's up and coming and showing 
showing really good promise since it's coming straight from a food. The next two I combine together because they're sugar alcohols. Now sugar alcohols can definitely give the same kind of digestive issues, bloating, gas, stomach pains, cramps, diarrhea, especially with people that already have irritation like IBS. But here are two of my favorites that have shown to kind of hold up over time, right? One is xylitol. And I don't use this very often because a lot of it is sourced from corn. So now we're running into, again, the impact on the brain. We're running into the glyphosate issue, Monsanto making it, GMOs, or all the things there, right? But you can get it sourced from birch, which is going to be a better option. I don't use a ton of this because it can you know, irritate the gut even a little bit more. Sugar alcohol can tend to do this. And with that perspective, though, there's also sorbitol. Now that comes um, traditionally from fruit. And I don't mind this one as uh, either. I don't use a ton of it, like straight up. I don't have sorbitol, but it's found sometimes in more like fruitier things to sweeten it up. It's gentler on the weight loss side of things because it's not spiking the blood sugar as much. They do contain calories, both of these, but they do occur in nature. Now there's processing that's done to get them into that powder form or liquid form that you're using them in. But both of those occur in fruits or in things like, you know, the birch or corn or specific, so are occurring in nature. So that's always a good thing of like, God made this thing and it's better than something that's made specifically in a lab, like an artificial sweetener, right? That's why I like going these directions. However, um, there is some higher GI distress with these sugar alcohols. I'm going to go over urethritol in a minute. I moved that to the next page for a reason, but I want to put these two here because they do have some benefits for teeth. You'll oftentimes see in alternative toothpastes, natural toothpaste, xylitol, because it is has been proven to have some teeth benefit, bone benefit, and even immune health benefits from these two of bolstering the immune system. Too much of them can create problems, just like with anything. However, those could be decent options. We use those occasionally with cooking or baking, but a lot of times it's just showing up, uh, for example, in a dental product. And then finally, there's allulose, allulose. And you may have heard this one, may have not heard of it, but it's a lower calorie sweetener, right? It's a, uh, doesn't have that spike on the sugar levels. It's gonna be friendly for weight loss side of things. It's about 70% as sweet as regular sugar, so it's dialed down on the sweetness a bit, but it's not raising those blood sugar levels. It is made, however, uh, it's naturally occurring in some foods, okay? And so it is naturally occurring. It does show up in, you know, fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. However, it's not like it's just captured, extracted, and then turned into like stevia or monk fruits. Like you just take it and then you put it into a powder or liquid form, right? This is rarely extracted, but it's almost like duplicated and they use a enzyme to actually break down from a fructose source and turn this into now what is a kind of, kind of a sister product of fructose called allulose but it doesn't act in the body like fructose. So it's not as taxing on the liver. In fact, it has some liver benefits to it because of the chemical structure being changed a bit. But because of that, it's a little more processed from an enzyme process. Typically, you're gonna get some GI distress if you eat way too much of it. So just be aware of that. And you wanna make sure if you can help it, it's not from a GMO source. When you're talking about starting with fructose and then turning it into allulose, they could be using corn for that. So it's really important to me when I get allulose for baking with it, so from the link that we put up on the market where you can actually see some of these products that we do use, allulose being on there, we wanna make sure it has that non-GMO symbol. It does have benefits to stimulate fat loss and it's gonna be much better on the liver because it's it's gonna have that, not that impact that fructose does on it even though it started as fructose. So there are your natural sweeteners, okay? This page right here is a great one if you're starting to lose weight. You want to begin to lose weight. You want to fix your blood pressure. You want to fix your cholesterol. You want to fix your um, your diabetes. This is the list I pick from first. Then what we're trying to work towards is less reliance on those because we fixed our sugar cravings. We fixed our insulin resistance, right? And then now we want to move towards this list. Now this looks like a lot of red, but that's our maple syrup, our honey, our dates, our molasses, our coconut, our palm. These are these, all these natural sugars that exist in nature. Once you fix your issues with cholesterol, with weight, with metabolism, we're working our way towards that. There's nothing wrong then with using these five or six, and there's nothing wrong then with using these as long as we're not overdoing it, okay? Here's the ones that start to create a lot of trouble, and this is what these new studies, or depending on when you're watching this video, urethritol, causing clots, let's break down the truth. And so I left that one sugar alcohol out because I moved it sort of to the in-between. Now, everything below urethritol is a straight up artificial sweetener. I'm gonna show you why these are dangerous. I'm gonna give you the warning right now to make sure 
sure to stay away from those. Now, erythritol has started to slip that direction, and let me explain why. It's very good from a weight loss perspective. Erythritol, in its studies, when you ingest it, 90% of it gets absorbed into the blood. So now it's floating around your bloodstream, and then they test the urine, and within 24 hours, a majority of it is out, and it's unchanged, which means your body didn't even break it down or process it. So that was a good choice for a weight loss perspective because it's not spiking glucose. It's not being broken down into glucose like honey wood or maple wood, right? It's just going in and then coming out. So you can see why it's used so much in diet products, zero products, you know, skinny products, because it wasn't pure artificial because it occurs in nature. Like you can literally find it in fruits, like grapes have urethritol in them, right? So it is naturally occurring. Yeasts, mushrooms, pears, watermelons, these all have naturally occurring. A little bit of calories. Some say there's a, you know, a 0.2, a little bit in there. So I put it as a yellow area. The problem is the sugar spikes. And what the recent debate is, is that it actually stays in the bloodstream a little longer than we expected. So this shows up in a lot of different foods, vitamin waters and, and different, you know, uh, flavored waters that we're drinking and candies and baked goods. And so we're thinking there's zero sugar. They're using erythritol to do it. So people are starting to consume more of this than was ever really intended. Think of the small amounts in a grape or in a watermelon, but this starts to build up. We thought it just passed straight through you, right? Unbroken down. Well, it's staying in the bloodstream a little bit longer. So what they did with this study is they looked at what is going on in the bloodstream of people that already had clots and already had heart disease issues. Okay. They looked at people already in that state, not what caused them to get there. They're already in there. And what they found is they found urethritol in the system. They also found other artificial sweeteners in the system. Urethritol got singled out because in their knowledge, that stuff just passed straight through them. And so they're now connecting it with, hey, it's in the blood and these people have this symptom and it's showing up in several of them. Now, the problem I have with this study is that they released it in a way to say, this is now causing clots. And that's just not true. That's not what the study says. It's saying it's showing up in the blood that people already had clots and already had heart disease issues. So it's kind of like, it starts to go a little bit along this line of an old study that I heard about. They're, they're saying, if they wanted to study what's common factors of people that end up in prison. And they looked at a lot of different factors. And one of the things they found is 100% of prisoners drank milk as a kid. So conclusion could be that milk causes you to go to prison. So sometimes there's that difference in the correlation of how you use it. So it wasn't saying that it directly causes it. In fact, there's another study that's PubMed research that shows they fed 20 to 30 grams of erythritol to people over several days and tested their blood vessels and the health of them. And they actually improved. So you got one study that's saying it this way. And then now this one is going the opposite direction. So I looked into the gentleman that did the study. He has direct ties to uh, seven different pharmaceutical companies and he owns multiple patents through the Cleveland Clinic. And with this specific drug company, he is getting kicked back and has patented rights and is getting a lot of money for the patents for a drug that impacts the health of the microbiome of the gut. Urethritol is directly related to the microbiome of the gut because it hits there directly, 90% gets absorbed and then goes straight out. That's what they were studying when they found this. He rips and gets a lot of attention for that. However, he is highly tied in with Procter and Gamble and several other um, large companies getting directly paid to do this. And he got paid a lot of money from the research company that put out the study. So there's just too much muddying of the water there. There is a potential correlation between cardiovascular disease. If you've already had a blood clot, if you already had heart disease conditions, I don't think I'd be reaching for erythritol. And myself in general, I don't really have it very much, but it shows up occasionally and it is naturally occurring in foods. So I just think that tells us it's not this thing that's gonna kill us, right? It's just that don't overdo this one, pick some better ones. That's my philosophy on it. So I'm not saying it's a free pass. I'm not saying we won't learn more about it. I'm just saying why? This is where I get a little compassion. It's compassion with a little bit pissed off. Why there's, it was on CNN and Fox and USA Today and everyone's up in arms. I'm getting hundreds and thousands of messages. What's going on with your thought? Oh my gosh, I gotta know the truth here. Holy cow. And I wanna just take a look and say, is there anything else that could possibly be causing blood clots that we could also pay attention to? Because this didn't even say, this is only a thousand people that already had blood clots. But then I look at an insert of a birth control and right in the insert it says, will cause blood clots. How many women are taking that? And at what rate is that creating problems? Or let's 
let's look at Effexor or antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds. Every one of them has a tie to blood clots. In fact, Effexor, right, from stroking out or having a clot, 10 to 12 times higher when you're taking that drug. So there's some other really obvious, very dangerous chemicals that weren't getting the media. This one is. I'm not giving it a free pass. I don't use it very often myself. I think I've given you a lot of other ones that you can be looking into, okay? But if you have some erythritol on your monk fruit right now, I don't think it means to freak out, right? And not that you maybe are, right? But I would maybe avoid the vitamin water zero or maybe avoid the skinny product or avoid, and not trust the big brands that are making that stuff, telling you it doesn't have sugar in it, telling you it doesn't have artificial sweeteners in it, but then you're using something like this. Now, here's the problem with urethitol. They're slipping artificial additives into it. When they're mass producing the sugar alcohol, there's zero regard for the quality of it, which means it's coming from toxic sources, very synthetically made, and artificial components are being put into it. So it's heavily processed. It's going to come from genetically modified organisms. It's going to come off with all the chemicals. And it's that's going to be potentially rough on your cardiovascular health because it's going to create inflammation just like every other artificial sweet, right? Now, urethritol by itself has some antioxidant benefits. Urethritol from the melon, from the grape, from the mushroom, from the pear, we're not seeing the problems there. So you can get organic non-GMO urethritol. And if I was going to use it and want to bake with it or do something with it, that's the type I'd be looking for. Pepsi and Coke don't give a rip about that. Nestle or you know, like some of those aren't going to care about the source of the urethritol. They just don't want to put aspartame in it. They just don't want to put an artificial sweetener because you're getting more educated that those are even more dangerous because they don't ever occur in nature. They're just chemicals made in a lab by man and we know that they're toxic. So with that said, urethritol sits in the middle. If you can get it organic or non-GMO and you know the source, I would say you're a green light. You're okay. It's made in nature, right? How However, it's getting more and more dicey the more it's used. So I don't use it much myself. I would encourage you. There's a lot of other really good options that you can go for right here. Uh, that would be much better to go that direction. But look what's going on on the rest of this page. The next one here, aspartame. So with this one, NutraSweet equal, that's going to be aspartame. And this one's directly tied to a lot of you know crazy conditions. Should you use it for weight loss? You could. The problem with it and every other one on this page is the cephalic response. When you take in an artificial sweetener like this, a lot of studies done on it, a diet soda that has an artificial sweetener, your body says, okay, here comes something sweet. So it starts getting ready, right? It's getting ready for, okay, where's the sugar? Where's the sugar? That's insulin, like a football player ready to make a tackle, right? But it never comes. And so then it says, well, we got all amped up. We got to play something. Come on. And it lowers any remaining blood sugar in the blood that might have been in there from previous meals. So when you take this, insulin goes up, blood sugar never shows up because it was artificial. Your blood sugar actually ends up dropping, which makes you more insulin resistant over time. So that is why people that use a lot of artificial sweeteners and diet drinks and skinny drinks and skinny coffees end up gaining more weight over time than losing it compared to those that were just eating the sugar. So that is why it's not weight loss friendly nor blood sugar friendly. Naturally occurring, not at all. This is completely synthetic, not trying to hide the fact at all. They're all linked to inflammation, metabolic disorders. And this one specifically raises cholesterol levels. It also can be a, a uh, allergen. It also can be a brain disruptor. So benefits, heck no. The next one on the list is sucralose, known as Splenda as its brand name. It's going to have the same thing across the board. Yes, it's going to be a zero GI index. Yes, it's going to be low calorie. However, it's not naturally occurring. It, it increased risk of cancer if you heat it. What is the most common thing that Splenda gets put in? Coffee. It's not heat stable. From the packaging to the moving of it, the processing, the chemical makeup of it is not heat stable. You put in your coffee, it's going to break down. In fact, I studied it because I'm a biochemistry minor, how they take and they say it starts from sugar. So they take sucrose and <laughs> it's like a 13 step biochemical reaction to end up what's called this really long, it's even hard for me to pronounce, chemical name that they just call Splenda. So it's very chemically processed. Although right in the packaging, they have the gusto to say made from real sugar. No, 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 no. That's a very long way from Kansas now, Dorothy. If it's very processed, it's gonna create inflammation. Next one, ACE K. I want you to get familiar with this one. This is the one you're maybe not watching out for enough because it has the word potassium in it. A sulfamine potassium, ACE K. One of the most popular ones I'm seeing now pop up in supplements, pop up in protein powders, pop up in um, you know drinks. So it's gonna have all the same criteria as far as it's gonna impact and take you the wrong direction with weight loss. It's definitely not natural occurring, but this one impairs mental function. It's also linked to a couple specific types of cancer and it's going to be inflammatory. No benefits from it. The one you probably haven't heard of or paid enough attention to, a sulfamine potassium. There's nothing wrong with potassium, but they connect it. And sometimes when you're reading an ingredient label, which is what I teach you to do, you see that one and you pass right over it because you're like, oh, no big deal. ACE K for short. The K stands for potassium. Okay. Uh, that's its elemental table abbreviation. Uh, however, you need to be on the lookout for that one. It's even like vitamin C 
supplements that have it, like all kinds of things like that. So be, be aware of that one. The final one, sweet and low. It's called saccharin, okay? It's gonna, that same stuff, it's not naturally occurring. It's gonna work against you from your blood sugar levels. This is a derivative of coal tar. I can't make this stuff up. It's a derivative of coal tar. That's how it's made. Enough said there, I'm out. But in case you aren't yet, it is also linked to certain type of cancers and it's inflammatory. These artificial ones in a lab are chemicals going into the body. Everything else above it at least has an opportunity to occur in nature. And I'm not saying some of them don't have downsides, but we're trying to eliminate this list. Okay, this list right here. This is the one that probably needs to go down. Erythritol, you've got your organic, you've got your natural, just less of it, all right? This list is a great alternative for your weight loss. Monk fruit, stevia, yakin fruit, maybe a little bit of xylitol, maybe a little sorbitol, maybe a little bit of allulose, right? There's some great options, losing the weight, not spiking the blood sugar levels, gonna help you get to your goals. Once you get to your goals, then you can start moving on up, right? Then you can get back to maple syrup and honey and dates and molasses and coconut palm. This may just slow down your weight loss journey is all, right? The more real it is, the better off you're gonna to be to help you with a resource of what do the living goods have in their kitchen? What are we using? The supplements that I make meet all these criterias. Um, we have put a link in the description that you can just check out, you know, what kind of sweet in your bag, what kind of flour, what kind of, you know, things that Nurse Living Goods using with her cookbook and with all of her recipes, that'll be a great resource for you. I'm gonna keep shredding this. I think this is the most comprehensive sweetener breakdown. I hope if I accomplish my goal that you've ever seen. If you wanna to go to the grocery store with me, actually shop for some of these, pick a few of them up, look at a few brands. You can check out this video right here next. The resources are in the description. Pass this one along to a family member or a friend, especially if they've been scared or saw the news about erythritol recently. Hopefully that clears up the truth and you've got the warnings of what to stay away from. You can achieve your health goals and lose the weight and fix your metabolism and still be a human being. And it doesn't have to be painful. You don't have to suffer so much through it. And you can still have some sweet things. You just got to know what to look for and do it right. All right, go make it a great day, you guys. Follow me for more videos like this. Pass this one along. Check out the resources below and the shopping video that I put right here for you.